Hello, everyone. Thank you for having me and thank you for joining us today. And um, today I will be uh, focusing on a little more on the surface part of the soul compaction and trying to give two different studies that I had experienced before with the manure. So Erin kind of explained quite a bit about the compaction and I'm just going to move you guys a little bit more towards the manure applications and its effect on uh, compaction and um, relate some, some related soil properties. So the first work I will be presenting is going to be from South Dakota and, and the second part of the work, second part, second work is going to be from the Wisconsin. And the Wisconsin one has the sandy soils in the, in the, in the field. So there are going to be some similarities to those areas in the East Coast. But if you have deep sandy soils and hard pens in it in the East Coast, then uh, uh, these impacts of the manure on the, on the compaction and other soil properties could be, could be more limited than what it is in, in this, in this presentation. So three different things I want to highlight here that I think they are really important uh, for manure application and especially when we focus on the soil property changes, especially from the physical perspective, would be the type of the manure and handling and application and also interaction with other uh, management practices like tillage or field traffic uh, because the distraction factor from the disturbing, disturbing uh, agents like tillage or, or any other field operations uh, may be greater than what we actually add as an organic matter and trying to expect positive relationships with or positive effect on soil compaction. So poultry manure or hawk manure or, or cattle manure, they're all having different characteristics, but with he and the cattle manure, the beef manure and dairy manure also has different characteristics. They have different nutrient contents, different moisture levels that I kind of categorize them in two different categories, like nutrients and also physically like moisture. And these are really important for manure application and, and expecting the changes in soil properties is because they have different nutrient content. And when you apply the manure, you calculate according to nutrient contents like nitrogen or phosphorus. And they also have different moisture levels. So the application amount of the manure is going to be different in dairy or beef. So for instance, here, let's say we are applying according to phosphorus or nitrogen. You can see greater numbers in beef manure, but when you look into moisture, you will have greater moisture in dairy, means to reach the same level of the nutrients, that amount of the manure you need to apply is gonna be much more in dairy, and also because of the moisture, that's gonna be even more. So just keeping those, mind and those in mind, and pipe is really important, handling application is important, but then in the second st study, we will be digging into uh, some other factors that is playing the critical role for those changes. So improper manure handling or, or, or spraying or exercising of the application can lead to soil compaction. So it is important to consider the, the how much field traffic we are causing and, and soil condition, like we just, I mean, Aaron just mentioned about soil moisture, is, is really important, especially when you're focusing on compaction and, and also application rates, how much manure you are adding there, uh, that that could be even more concerning when you think about the environmental perspective, but focusing on the compaction, how are you applying that manure? Are you applying the solid manure on the surface? Are you incorporating with the tillage or are you just applying like in the picture here on, on the snow and in liquid form or are you just drilling in the, or injecting in the liquid manure? Those are all really important factors to consider and depending on the objective of the, of the work. So next, I want to talk a little bit about the manure management uh, for enhancing the soil resilience. Here we have some different pictures of the different size of the aggregates. And we also have organic matter playing critical role. So there are different factors there, but I want to categorize in three different category. One is increasing the soil organic matter, and we know soil organic matter has an effect on the soil structural development. So the second one is soil structure. Having a better soil structure usually help. And also the root growth, having the living roots in the system. Those are the three different things that uh, many in could incorporate, like supporting more vegetation growth or increasing the organic matter and improving soil structures. So we have different aggregate sizes and those have different pores and particles together. And, and also you can see even here in much detail, we have different pores in, in even smaller sizes. And incorporating manure in, in the system can, can lead to aggregation or increasing the organic matter. But at the same time, we need, to, we need to consider that soil structure is also playing a critical role there. 
And those pores are the where we store the nutrients and those are the where we store water. And, and we also need to understand that organic matter could be a binding agent between particles and it can also take place in, in creating of those pores. So strategies to minimize the compaction would be choosing the appropriate equipment, trying to avoid the field traffic and also monitoring the soil moisture level. That's really important. And uh, having the heavy equipment in the field when it's moist we just saw from the air install that is really, really important. Timing and uh, soil conditions and, and also uh, incorporate manure properly. Are you gonna do a reduced tillage just to incorporate the manure? Are you gonna spray it on it or liquid form? They're all really important as I just mentioned in the, in the previous slide too. So the first study is going to be about the different three, three different rate of the manure application rate. And we have two inorganic fertilizer application rate and a control. And for the manure, PM is representing the phosphorus-based manure application. is a recommended rate for South Dakota. And NM is a nitrogen-based manure. And HM means high manure, which means it's double rate of the NM, basically. So this is two, two times nitrogen we are adding in the system with the HM. Then we have nitrogen fertilizer, where we add nitrogen only for corn. And then we have high fertilizer, where we support other nutrients like phosphorus, potassium, zinc, and sulfur as well. And control, there is nothing, no, no manure, no inorganic fertilizer. And we did this study in two different sites, which dairy manure and beef manure are the one we used for, for each site. And they were in South Dakota. And uh, all my graphs for this work is going to be color coded. So green is going to represent manure and orange is going to represent inorganic fertilizer and control is gray. And increasing the density of the color in each uh, in, in figures, they are going to be representing the increasing the rate of the manure application. So basically what we have seen here, focusing a little bit on the surface, zero to four inches, that manure application did decrease the bulk density and increasing the rate also decreased that. And when we move into the second depth, is a subsurface, four to eight inches, we see slightly changes in bulk density, but effect is limited compared to surface depth, means the impact of the manure is slowly moving in deeper profile, but we are still very close to surface. So the the another property that I'm gonna show, uh, soil structure, really important about the compaction and having more aggregation, having more pores in the space is, is really important. We have seen improvements in, in manure application, again, increasing the rate has better, so for the surface, the manure has a great impact on improving soil structure. In subsurface, it seems it's slowly moving. And this is the effect after 14 years, both bulk density and aggregate stability was 14 years of the application of manure. And we have seen some negative effect from the fertilizer, even though they are not significantly different numbers were a little low compared to control. In previous years, this was not visible too much, but when we move forward to like more 14 years level, and we have start seeing this more and more. So impact of the manure is, is there in, in aggregation too. So we talk about the bulk density and soil aggregation. So of course they are all related to pores and bigger pores especially are gonna be a good story today. We have in the second work too. And water infiltration is heavily depending on that, right? So we have seen an increase in water in temp infiltration uh, due to the manure impacts. And we don't see that effect from the fertilizer applications. Again, don't forget the color codes and looking into organic matter comparing different years. So previously we were looking into different depths, right? Now in general, we are looking at difference between, between the years. So one year after we start, we have no seen, see no impact from the manure and organic fertilizer. And we come, when we come back after 14 years, we, we, we see a much more impacts from the manure. And it has been increasing the soil organic matter and increasing the rate of manure application also increase the soil organic matter level. So the next, I'm gonna show here in this graph, same thing with soil organic matter, nitrate, nitrogen also show similar results. You know, the, the nutrients can be responsive in shorter time than the soil structure or other soil properties. We have seen a greater impact with increasing the rate after 14 years in organic fertilizer. There were a little move, but differences are not significant. And we have seen same trends for other nutrients as well. I'm not going to put the figures for them here, but just want to uh, highlight that other nutrients were also showing the similar trends that nitrate, nitrogen or, or soil organic matter. So the next is pH. 
uh, there is a huge database behind these data, uh, these, these slides. So I just want to summarize here for pH. Menu showed uh, different reaction in different fields. And the, the pH showed different reactions to menu application in different fields. When the pH level was high, like 8, 8.5, manure tend to decrease that pH. And when the level of the pH was low, about the 5.56 level, and manure tend to increase that uh, pH level. And But when we look into inorganic fertilizer, we know the pH level is low. So it's, we always see a negative effect of the inorganic fertilizer, no matter whatever the level of the initial pH is. Electrical conductivity. Probably one of the negative effect of manure when we apply in a really high rate, this rate is, is crazy. It's like 1,700 pounds per acre. That that's that's too much. And um, and also we have seen inorganic fertilizer has, has either no impact or decreasing, and only highest rate of the manure has increased electric conductivity. But we are still in the safe range, right? 0.78 is is a good number. For especially soils like in South Dakota has good structures and good organic matter levels. Uh, I think these numbers are okay still. So how about biologicals? Uh, and we have seen support to fungi and nitrogen and carbon-based enzymes like urease and beta-glucosidase. And uh, we haven't seen any impact on bacteria because of the manure application, but fungi and population and, and also some enzyme activities were, were increased. Again, why we are talking about all these properties together? Because when we talk about the soil health, and which is focusing on soil compaction or soil physical properties, we have seen a quite a bit correlation between soil health scores and crop yield. In x-axis here, we have the soil health scores from left to right is increasing, and crop yield in the y-axis from bottom to up it is increasing. And you can see it's kind of a not completely linear, but it's very close, right? So we have seen control right here, and then we have two inorganic fertilizers and three manure. So manure is definitely helping the soil health scores, right? But when we look at in the crop yield, fertilizer and lower rate of the manure has not, not that much significant differences. Uh, but when we look at the soil health score, fertilizer is not significant, like high fertilizer and control, they are not significantly different. So it seems the increasing of the manure rate, like you can see from the lighter blue, darker blue and green, like here, we can see increase both from the crop yield and soil health. As a summary graph, it's showing that higher rate of manure is also supporting crop yield as well. So that was the first study. We mainly focus on the different type of manure application. And in here in second study, I want to highlight a little bit about the disturbance factors of wheat manure or without manure. So we had a no-till and conventional till systems in, in Wisconsin and in on a slope. And uh, we had the manure incorporation with solid manure or, or liquid manure. And since the first study was solid manure, let's, let's focus on solid manure too. So we can kind of have some comparison there. Uh, and we also sample different times, like before tillage, before planting, after planting, summer, before harvesting and after harvesting. So that way we can see the impact of the agricultural activities, right? Like planting impact, summer impact, harvesting impact, tillage impact, with and without the manure scenarios. So here the blues are gonna be tillage and intensity of the color is gonna be manure or no manure. So as we can see in the box density, we had a greater box density in no-till systems and manure did not differentiate. This was very common in most of the soil properties in, in Wisconsin, in, in more sandier soils. Uh, we have seen greater impact from the disturbance agents like tillage or agri any agricultural activity that add more traffic in the field or, or erosion sometime. We had some, some data to measure that too. So um, disturbing factors due to the agricultural activity were always having greater impact than manure having impact in, in the soils. So in here we can see bulk density was much higher in, in, in nodal system. Again, uh, I only showing the surface depth, but we have this all the way down to the 40, 50 centimeters, which is around 16, 18 inches, I, I believe. So you're welcome to ask more detail if you want to focus on the deeper soil profile. So when we look into aggregation, again, tillage is making the huge difference, especially in the bigger aggregates. So it's the effect of the disturbance on bigger aggregates is great. And even, but we can also still see some of the significant differences for manure addition, which is the, the orange here is has manure and blue doesn't have manure. 
you can see some shift in the big one too, in, in different sizes. So when we move from the planting, for example, this one was before planting to the harvesting, the responses are changing under manure and, and no manure. But when you go in the smaller aggregates, those response kind of constant between the different timing, but effect of manure is there. Same thing in the no-till has, has an impact, but tillage impact is much greater than an adding manure in the, in the system because it's kind of disturbing. So here, x-axis, we are going from planting to harvesting from left to right. And here on, on the, on the y-axis, we have soil micropores. So you, you can just kind of visit the convention till no manure. You can kind of see here from the planting to the harvesting, this is the year one and this is the year two. And you can see a decrease from the macro pore. So we have a quite a significant effect on agricultural disturbance on the, on the macro pores presence in the soils or proportion in the soils. We have a very clear impact of harvesting that is decreasing the macro pores proportion. We also have a very clear impact of the tillage on them. And when we look at the scenario with the manure, we still have those effects in conventional till systems. But when we look into no-till system, we see an increase. So the agricultural disturbance is not as intense as in conventional tills. So we start seeing the positive effect of that in, in, in this study. So again, effect of the manure is still limited, but in, in, in tillage or disturbance effect is, is more clear. And you can see that from the starting points that there is a significant difference and ending points, they are much different. So the, the effect of uh, activity in, in field is, is quite significant. But when we look into micropores, we don't see that. Even though they start in the same level and changes in the micropores pro, uh, proportion doesn't change too much. So it shows that disturbance is more effective on the, on the, on the bigger pores in, in, in the system. And this also shows in water release. So when we look into more into smaller pores or moisture content in different pores, there we can see a significant impact of the manure. So especially in the no-till systems, dark blue is representing solid manure and lighter blue is no manure. You can see there's a significant effect even in, in, in smaller pores compared to, compared to bigger pores. Uh, but tillage effect is still there. It is still there. Same thing with the carbon content. We have seen differences from zero to six inches, no differences, six to 12 inches. We have increased, we have an effect of tillage, for example, no till, no manure, conventional till, no manure, significantly different. But when we look into conventional till systems, even though tillage has effect and manure also shows an effect on it. So manure has effect on organic carbon or organic matter in, in both studies, we have seen this. So looking into more stable organic carbon or, or, or active organic carbon, we have found the relationship between the active organic carbon and bigger aggregates, which are being heavily disturbed compared to smaller ones. And we have seen more stable organic carbon in smaller aggregates. I think that was something really important to know that. So for the conclusion, this is an inner layer surface of the aggregate. Uh, I thought it's a good slide for conclusion, and we can see different pore sizes here with, with different shapes and with different sizes. And we sometimes have the pore there continuous. We have soil particles around it with different colors and with different elements in it. So focus on this rectangle because most of the data I'm going to show is from here. So when you when you look into elemental distribution, is you, you can see that from the top to bottom the, the these are the most representative elements here. They are, they are in this area and from top to bottom, the, the, the proportion is decreasing. And we can even map them and we can look at into different pores and different elements and see which one is higher in the system. You can see like lighter color means we, we have more of that. You can see iron, this, this particle is in iron, this particle is calcium. And we have calcium around here too. I'm, I, I'm focusing on calcium because we have seen a quite a good correlation between calcium and soil structure stability. And, and aggregate sizes in, in the system. So they, they definitely play a critical role and manure has all these in it, including soil organic matter, carbon, nitrogen, different elements. And so just consider them when you're applying manure and, and in the questions that what you are expecting. So I am Ekram Oslo and an assistant professor and soil management extension specialist. I'm in North Carolina State University and don't hesitate to reach out if you have any questions. Uh -huh.